Hey everybody, welcome to another lesson of learning Japanese. Today we are covering another iteration of anime vocabulary and with this video we're going to be covering the 12th episode of the anime One Punch Man. So for One Punch Man number 12 we're going to be covering five vocabulary terms and the five vocabulary terms are yoyu which means surplus or margin, kechaku which is going to translate to conclusion or settlement or decision, Intai, which is going to translate to retire, Mondaiji, which is going to translate to problem child or troublemaker, and Tepeki as impregnable fortress or iron wall. So with our vocabulary list listed, let's just jump into the sentences that they are used in the actual episode. So first up we have Yoyu, and again this is going to translate to surplus or margin or allowance or flexibility, and it is used in the line Omae ni wa Yoyu ga atta. So let's break down this sentence that Lord Boros is saying bit by bit. First up we have omai, and this is just gonna be a pronoun to refer to you, so a second person pronoun. It will translate to you. We have the particles ni and wa, and the reason why we have ni wa here instead of perhaps just wa is because it's being used to emphasize the word before it which is omai which is you. So there's going to be a kind of emphasis on the word you in this sentence and we'll refer back to that after we finish the rest of the words in the sentence. So after niwa we have the vocabulary word in discussion here, yoyu, and this is going to translate to surplus or margin or allowance. In this context, we're going to interpret it as basically just power left over or power to spare. Yoyu is going to be a noun, so after that we're going to have the phrasing ga atta, and this is basically just going to be the grammar construct that is ga aru to mean to have. Aru here is in its past plain form, so aru turns into atta, so yoyu ga atta is going to translate to had surplus or had margin. More naturally, it'll become had power to spare, had power left over. So we combine this with the rest of the sentence and we have once again omae ni wa yoyu ga atta. Omae ni wa yoyu ga atta. And this is going to be you still had power to spare basically and as I said the emphasis is on the you. So basically there's a subtle implication here that it was Saitama that had power left to spare and Lord Boros did not at all. For our next vocabulary word we have kechaku and this is going to translate to conclusion or settlement or decision. Let's jump into the actual line that it's used in and here we have Metal Bat explaining what happened with the big fight that happened in the city and we have the line Taiho renpatsu de kono zama da, daga mo kechaku wa suita. Taiho renpatsu de kono zama da, daga mo kechaku wa suita. And what we're going to translate to this sentence to make it more natural in English is they fired a bunch of artillery at us and this is what happened but we took care of it. So let's break down the line bit by bit and see how we're going to translate it into that kind of mouthful in English. So first up we have the word taiho renpatsu and this is basically going to be two words combined to be a compound word. First up we have taiho which is going to translate to basically gun or artillery. Then right after it we have the word renpatsu which is basically going to translate to firing in rapid succession. So basically rapid fire. So combined taiho renpatsu is basically just going to be translating to rapid fire artillery. We have the particle de right after that compound word to mark it as basically the means of what happened. Right after the particle de, we have kono, which is going to translate to this. It's going to be modifying the word right after it, which is zama. And what zama is basically going to translate to is a sorry sight or a mess. And right after zama, we have da, it's going to be the plain form of des, and it's basically just going to end this thought. So all together so far, we have taiho renpatsu de kono zama da. Taiho renpatsu de kono zama da. And what this will literally translate to is basically something along the lines of by means of rapid fire artillery, this sorry sight. And since that sounds pretty awkward in English, we're gonna naturalize it and we'll add some subtle nuances grammatically speaking and it'll come out to be they fired a bunch of artillery at us and this is what happened. So that's the first sentence and now we move into the second sentence of the line. So first up now we have daga and this is just gonna mean but basically. We have mo which means already. Then we have our vocabulary word here which is kechaku and this is gonna again translate to conclusion or settlement or decision. Right after that we have the particle wa marking as the topic of the sentence. Then we have suita and this is gonna be basically the plain past form of the verb suku which is going to mean to arrive. So what this will kind of literally translate to is basically the decision or the settlement has already arrived. We can more naturally translate that to just we took care of it already. So all together once again we have Taiho renpatsu de kono zama da daga mo kechaku wa suita. And that will be they fired a bunch of artillery at us and this is what happened but we already took care of it. 
Our next vocabulary word is intai, and this is going to translate to retire. And for the line that the word is used in, we have yaku ni tatanai nara, jishu teki ni intai shitamai. And what this line will translate to is basically, if you're going to be this useless, just do us the favor of voluntarily retiring. Yaku ni tatanai nara, jishu teki ni intai shitamai. So let's break down this line bit by bit. First up, we have a kind of default phrase, yaku ni tatanai. This is basically going to be the negative nai form of the phrase yaku ni tatsu, and that is going to translate to basically to be helpful or to be useful. So if we're doing the negative form of that, it's going to be basically to not be helpful or not be useful or to be useless if you want to connotate that um, aggressively. Right after yaku ni tatanai, we have nada, which is going to invoke basically a conditional. So if you're going to be this useless, that's the first part of the sentence we have here. Right after that, we have jishu teki, and this is going to be an adverb that means of your own will or voluntarily. We have the particle ni right after that to turn it into an adverb and it's going to be modifying the word right after it which is our vocabulary term intai which is going to be retire right after intai we have shitamai and this is going to be the imperative form of the verb tamao which is kind of a confusing word being used here but it'll basically translate to to grant or to bestow and since it's being used in the imperative form it's kind of an aggressive request for somebody to do something so intai shitamai is going to be do us the favor of voluntarily retiring and it's being said here in a kind of aggressive and imperative manner so once again our whole sentence is yaku ni tatanai nara jishu teki ni intai shitamai and that is going to translate to if you're going to be this useless just do us the favor of voluntarily retiring yaku ni tatanai nara jishu teki ni intai shitamai for our next vocabulary word, we have the pretty commonly used word mondaiji, and this is going to translate to problem child or just troublemaker in general. And for our line in the episode, we have Tsuyoi hiro ni wa nande komo mondaiji ga oinja. Tsuyoi hiro ni wa nande komo mondaiji ga oinja. And so here we have a pretty dialectic uh, line because there are some regional nuances being used here. First up, we have the E adjective suyoi, and this is just going to mean strong. It's going to be modifying the noun right after it, which is the katakana word for hero, hiro. And once again, we have the double particle usage of niwa here. And as I said in the previous line, this is going to be emphatic. So it's going to be putting an emphasis on the strong heroes or um, we can just translate to that to the elite heroes, basically the S-class heroes in the context of this anime, including Saitama, who is a B-class, but yeah, he's in that group of elite heroes. So right after Niwa, we have Nande, and this is basically going to translate to Y. Right after Nande, we have the word Komo, and this is going to translate to kind of such or in this way and it's going to be referring to the word right after it which is our vocabulary word mondaiji so problem children or troublemakers so komo mondaiji is going to basically being such problem children or such troublemakers we have the particle ga right after mondaiji to make it the subject of the sentence then we have the adjective oi which is going to translate to many or a lot then we have our sentence ending nuance of ja and this is just going to basically be a kind of regional dialectic thing so not too uh, necessary to know in terms of what the meaning is behind the sentence. So once again, the whole sentence is hiro ni wa nande komo mondaiji ga oinja, and that will translate to why are there so many problem children amongst the elite heroes. Hiro ni wa nande komo mondaiji ga oinja. For our last vocabulary word, we have the word tepeki, and this is going to translate to basically impregnable fortress, and what it'll literally translate to is iron wall. Basically, what the word itself consists of in terms of kanji is iron, which is tetsu, and wall, which is kabe, or in this case, it turns into peki when we, can tran when we combine the two to make tepeki to be iron wall, literally, or impregnable fortress as another uh, alternative definition. And so now let's go into the line that it's actually used in and we have uh, Genos kind of reflecting on what happens after the big battle and how the hero association is uh, counteracting uh, future such threats. And so for our line we have Hiro Kyokai Honbu wa sono go wa tatemono no kyoka kachiku wa okonai tepeki no yosai o sukuri ageta. And so what this line will translate to is basically after that the hero association restructured and strengthened their headquarters to become an impregnable fortress. Hero Kyokai Honbu wa sono go tatemono no kyoka kaichiku wo okonai deppeki no yosai wo tsukuri ageta. 
So this is a line with some pretty technical terms. Let's break it down bit by bit to get a feel of what's going on here. First up, we just have Hiro Kyokai, and this is going to be Hero Association. The Hiro is, of course, the katakana word for hero, and Kyokai is going to translate to association or organization. Right after that, we have Honbu, which is going to translate to headquarters. So basically, all three of those words together will be the Hero Association uh, headquarters. Uh, then we have the particle wa marking it as the topic of the sentence. Right after the particle wa, we have sono go, and this is gonna be basically after that. We have another instance of wa here marking that as the topic. Right after that, we have a noun of a noun modification going on here. So for our first noun, we have tatemono, which is gonna be building. Then we have the particle no right after it to instigate the modification. Uh, then for our second noun, which is kind of a compound word here, it's going to be tatemono no kyoka kaichiku. And this is going to be two words like I just said. So kyoka is going to basically translate to strengthen or intensify or reinforce or enhance. And kaichiku is going to translate to basically reconstruction or um, alteration of a building. So altogether, the noun of a noun modification here is tatemono no hyoka kaichiku, and this is going to basically be restructuring and fortifying of the building. Right after that, we have the particle o, and this is going to mark that as the direct object. So the restructuring and fortifying of the building here is a direct object to the verb that's about to come, which is okonai. Okonai here is basically going to derive from okonao, the verb that means to perform or to do or to carry out. And now we move on to the second part of the sentence that starts off with a vocabulary word here, which is tepeki. So impregnable fortress. It's going to be part of another noun of a noun modification here. So right after tepeki, we have the particle no to instigate that noun of a noun modification. Uh, then we have the second noun in the formula, which is going to be yosai. And this is basically going to translate to a fort or a stronghold. So together, tepeki no yosai is going to be basically an impregnable fortress. It is kind of redundant since tepeki can already mean impregnable fortress on its own. So we don't have to say an impregnable fortress of a fort. So we just more simply turn it into impregnable fortress when we translate it into English. That noun of a noun modification right there, the impregnable fortress is going to be the direct object to the verb that's about to come. So we mark it with a direct particle O right after it. And then we have our verb, which is Sukuri ageta. And so Sukuri ageru is going to translate to basically to build up, to complete, or to construct. It's going to be in its plain past form here. So it's Sukuri ageta instead of Sukuri ageru. And that completes the sentence. So once again, the line is Hiro Kyokai Honbu wa sono go wa tatemono no Kyokai Kaichiku o okonai tepeki no yoso o sukuri ageta. Hiro Kyokai Honbu wa sono go wa tatemono no Kyokai Kaichiku o okonai tepeki no yosai o tsukuri ageta. And what this line will translate to is after that, the Hero Association reconstructed and fortified their headquarters to become an impregnable fortress. And so, yeah, that covers the five vocabulary terms that we have for the 12th episode of One Punch Man. Uh, hopefully you learn some new words and some good contextual information in how they are used in uh, this anime episode.